I'm Catherine Arndt, the Chief of the VLGA Connect Studio. Welcome to today's episode, brought to you by the VLGA, your councillor support network and the national broadcaster on all things local government. Hi everyone, welcome to VLGA Connect. It's time for another in our Local Leaders series and we're heading into central Victoria today to meet the Mayor of Macedon Rangers Shire Council, Councillor Annette Deeth. Lovely to have you on the program, welcome. Thank you for having me, Chris. And nice to to meet you um, as, as a first-term mayor. There's a few of you around uh, the state. Really wanted to get a sense of how it was going for you and your uh, experience as a councillor because uh, you are a first-term councillor as well, aren't you? That's correct. Um, look, I'm really fortunate here in the Macedon Rangers. Great community, great team of councillors and wonderful executive leadership team. So the previous mayor is now my deputy and she's very experienced um, and has really helped me with the onboarding process and stepping up into the leadership role. And that's uh, that's Jennifer Anderson. That is Councillor Jennifer Anderson, correct. Yes. So let's take a bit uh, of a step back. On this particular uh, program, we like to find out a bit about you and um, how you found your way to local government. What's your story, your journey look like? So my journey into local government, I think like maybe many people in local government, wasn't expected. Um, yeah. We were in COVID and we were in lockdown, uh, a bit much more easier in regional Victoria, I must admit, than Metro. And we had some um, strategic land use planning issues happening locally in my area and it was generating a lot of um, commentary on social media. So I thought running for local government would be a great way to really raise the profile of this issue and have the community's voices heard. Uh, wasn't expecting to be elected. Right. So uh, when the, uh, the polls closed and the results started coming in, my husband ran into a room where I was working in my office and said, I think you're going to be elected. What are we going to do now? I, said, I don't know. <laughs> I guess I'm going to be a councillor. Um, so uh, yes, unexpected journey to get to where we are now. Um, but really happy to have the opportunity and for the community support to be able to be in this role. That raises a question in my mind too about um, what sort of information was available to you in making that decision about uh, what the councillor role entailed and whether whether you were up for it. It sounds it's like... A, that, is, that is a very good question, Chris. Yeah. So um, BLGA ran some great candidate information forums, which I joined, uh, and there was also that compulsory training that we now need to do uh, if you're going to nominate to be um, run for council. But I think in reality it is um, much more time consuming than what you initially think. So mm. the kind of benchmarking conversations before running was around 20 hours per week to be an effective counsellor. But in reality, I feel it is much more than 20 hours a week uh, to do the job really well. Just by the time you do briefings, events, get across all the reading, attend meetings, and then actually engage with the community, it is it is quite a time consuming role. Yeah, and I guess it's it's what you want to put into it too, isn't it? So Absolutely. You, I, I'm Absolutely. sure you've already seen. You know, some councillors will uh, devote a lot more time than others. I'm not sure whether that correlates to effectiveness as a councillor, but clearly there's a minimum amount of effort that you need to do. Certainly is a minimum amount of effort. You know, at the end of the day, we're accountable back to the community. Mm. So what you put in is what you're going to get back. And if you'd like to be re-elected or run again, I think being present and visible and making sure you're doing as much work as you can to be an effective councillor is a really important part of the process. Given, um, we've gone a little bit off track to where I was going to go, uh, but, but, <laughs> but, but but given what you've just said and now you've been on that learning curve, any regrets about putting your hand up? Absolutely no regrets. No. Look, it has been um, slightly challenging from a family front. I've got two young children and I was working full time until I was elected as mayor. So working full time, doing council on top of that and having the children was was a little bit feeling quite stretched across all of those roles, um, but it's been a phenomenal experience being able to get across all the local issues and be at the decision-making table. So have no regrets whatsoever in stepping up to become a councillor. Were you, there's been a lot said about barriers to entry for women in particular, the way the, the, the system is mm. structured. Were you cognizant of that before getting involved in council? Uh, I, I think there was probably a part of me that realised there was a lack of diversity um, with the councillor cohort across the state, but probably wasn't really aware of what those real challenges were. Because when I sat back and was reflecting on 20 hours a week, uh, you know, my husband and I were like, okay, how can we use our timetable effectively between our two roles to, to make this possible? 
but as I said, in reality, I feel it is much more uh, commitment than that. Mm. So, um, yeah, probably wasn't really across the, the true dynamics of the role. Like anything, I think, until you're actually in the role, you don't really un have that understanding. Mm. And that would be my feedback uh, as part of a, a process of reviewing candidate information is, is really having that in-depth and detailed look at what's involved in the role from a time perspective. Um, we often see people put their hand up on uh, the basis of single issues that they want to have an impact on, and then they find out there's so much more to them. So role. much more. Yeah. Well, yeah. Your, what were your, like you've talked a bit about what prompted you, but what's become sort of priority issues for you now that you are a council and you've seen the breadth of things that councils do? Well, interestingly, um, as I said, I was really interested in local planning issues, but it's become more prevalent since being a council law that that is a major issue across the whole shire. Yeah. So it's not something that's unique to the local area that I live in. Uh, they, that would be one of the key challenges across our shire around strategic land use planning uh, and obviously the tensions and getting the right balance between population growth housing supply and then also retaining the beautiful rural character of the Macedon Ranges and our environment. So um, we might come back to uh, local issues in, in just a little bit, but let's get back to learning a bit more about you. And what's your background before getting involved in local government? So my background, I was working at Morris Blackburn Lawyers um, and I've taken a leave of absence for this 12 months. So um, not in the legal cohort, I'm the National Business Development Manager. So working across the firm nationally uh, with our clients, which is which is a fantastic role. And they've been really supportive. Um, that's been another element that's helped me step up into this role, a great employer that's really um, encouraged me into public life, which has been great. And prior to that, uh, Masters in Public Policy, studied arts, um, did my honours year and just progressed from there. So, um, mm. yeah, for the last six or seven years, been at Morris Blackburn. How does that uh, help or hinder uh, the role of councillor? I would assume it helps bring you, it helps you bring a different lens to some of the issues you need to get across. I, I think it certainly does. Um, that business development perspective really helps with thinking about stakeholder engagement, community representation. Um, how we're we working with our community to get the best feedback and input that we can through many of our processes, but also how can we encourage more activity, uh, especially from a tourism and economic development lens, thinking about how we can grow the region and how we can really promote what's great in the Macedon Ranges. Um, and you are from Central Victoria originally? From Central Victoria, born and bred in Bendigo. So I know the Macedon, Macedon Ranges really well. Um, and funnily enough, growing up, always commuting to Melbourne to see family and for parents um, work. We'd go through the Macedon Ranges, always so cold. And yeah. my, my my clear memories of the Macedon Ranges, every time we got to the Macedon Ranges, like, oh, it's so cold, I will never live here. Yeah. Um, and here we are now and we absolutely yeah. love it. <laughs> Yeah, and, and not only that, uh, the, the first citizen, if I can put it that way, the first among equals on uh, on the council. So let's talk about some local and current uh, issues. Keen to get your thoughts on some of the things that councils are dealing with at the moment. One of them is, um, I guess, this rise of disruption to council mm -hmm. meetings and challenging processes, challenging councils' uh, authority. Have you had to deal with much of that in your neck of the woods? We haven't at this point in time in the Macedon Ranges, but it's obviously highlighted those key issues around how can we be best placed to manage those situations if they did arise. So um, I know the executive leadership team and there's been a ministerial forum with mayors to think about how we can manage public disruption. So we have had to put some key steps in place if the situation were to arise. Uh, but at this point in time, we we haven't had experienced any of those public disruptions. The cancellation of the Commonwealth Games, were you expecting much to flow through to Macedon Ranges from that? We certainly were. That was a, a big shock uh, to hear that announcement and was also really disappointing because we were expecting that flow on effect for our local businesses in particular mm. through the Macedon Ranges. And we know our local businesses were also really excited to be part of that process and forward planning and forward thinking. Um, so it was a real shame, understand the reasons behind it, but um, also really keen to get more information about the available funding uh, that will um, that the state government has announced for regional and rural Victoria. Uh, obviously, Macedon Ranges is, is not one of the four regional hubs, but I have heard anecdotally that some councils uh, in, in geographical 
locations like yours, near hubs, perhaps had made commitments based on the expected economic boost that was going to come from having the games in regional Victoria. Have you been in a position of making plans based on that, that you've now got to decide whether to maintain or not? We didn't have any plans officially in place, but we had been advocating hard to state government and the relevant authorities Mm -hmm. um, around accommodation and what accommodation could look like and how we could support those hubs with accommodation to take the pressure off. Um, so there was there was nothing that we'd actually agreed to at this point in time, but we had invested a significant amount of time around advocacy, especially as part of being Lord and Mally and Lord and Capacity Mayor and CEO groups. We'd been working together around advocacy on how we could support the regional hubs. Um, the silver lining that some have described is now that spend on uh, housing will be more broadly across regional Victoria. Do you have a sense yet of how much that might flow through to your municipality don't have all the details in relation to that yet but uh it will be uh, i think from that perspective more beneficial because instead of having to advocate to get a slice of the pie we definitely know we'll get part of it now so um that that's really welcomed and will be something positive for our local area what does that housing crisis as it's being described look like for Macedon mm. rangers are you I, I assume you're experiencing the same challenges that everyone else is We certainly are. Significant population growth that we're having to work with, especially um, during COVID and post-COVID. The proximity of the Macedon Ranges to Metro Melbourne and to regional Victoria is a really attractive um, place for people to move to. So really trying to work through um, that population growth, how we have the housing supply to support the population growth, but also thinking through employment, local employment. How can we keep people locally, keep people off the roads, reducing cars on the roads, and then the pressures on our V-line network as well between yeah. Bendigo and Melbourne. So as we record this, Annette, the Operation Sandon report has just come out. This probably won't be released for a few weeks hence. Big changes, though, being mooted, and I know we haven't seen a lot of detail yet, for planning, and you've come in uh, with a particular interest in local planning issues. How concerned are you by the messaging that we're starting to hear that the government does intend to remove some uh, planning uh, decision-making power from councils? Look, we don't know, as you've noted, the details and we're eagerly awaiting uh, what this announcement will look like. Of course, we would love to see a partnership approach um, between state government and local government because, in particular, we're concerned about the community views. So if there is a change around the planning process and the decision-making process, where does the community come into that decision-making process and how will they be factored in? Because the community is a really important part of of decision-making when when it comes to planning. Okay, let's talk about your mayoral term and what you're hoping to achieve or or leave as a legacy. As we speak, uh, you've probably got, what, five months, four to five months left of your term. I can tell by the look on your face, it's gone very quickly. (laughs) It goes very fast, very fast. (laughs) What sort of um, scorecard are you keeping for yourself and you hope to uh, deliver in this 12-month term? Yeah, so I don't have a scorecard as such, uh, but it's really making sure that uh, we're cohesive group of councillors and we're forward looking and solutions focused and really bringing the community on that journey with us. So a big focus has been around how can we get key messaging out to the community? What are those conversations? So um, since uh, being in the mayoral role, worked really closely with council laws around how we can increase that community engagement. So we've enacted listening posts, getting councillors out in their specific wards and really promoting that and getting the community along to have conversations. We're hoping to host um, some of our briefings out of chamber, so go around to some different communities out of different town halls. Uh, So we're in the process of implementing that at the moment. So I'm hoping to at least get one of those under my belt before I depart uh, in this mayoral term. Um, And in particular, really making sure that we're working through our council plan and progressing those key action items uh, that are part of the council plan. How 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 is it feeling to be in that position of being the leader, the first among equals, if you like, of a group of councillors when you're just a first term councillor? Well, I shouldn't say just, but when you are a first term councillor yourself, but now you're leading the group, that leadership role. How's that fitting? I will have to admit, when I first stepped up, I did have imposter syndrome. I thought, yeah. um, you know, who am I to be mayor? And I really struggled leaning into that title of mayor. So um, I would often go out to events and say, no, just call me Annette, please don't call me mayor. Um, but I'm feeling much more comfortable with recognising the role and that I am the mayor in that leadership space. Uh, I do know some first-term mayors that did it uh, first-term council laws as well. So very first year being elected, stepped yeah. up and were, were mayor. 
um, I think that's phenomenal because for me, having the, the two years prior to really understand the role and um, gain awareness of what's involved um, has helped me in the mayoral role. But I just don't think um, for me as a councillor, I tr truly understood the role of mayor with what happens behind the scenes. Um, yeah. It is very time demanding um, from the perspective of all the incidental conversations you need to have with executive leadership, with the CEO, working closely with the CEO. Um, and as I said previously, we've got a great executive leadership team here in the Masson Rangers. So everyone's been really supportive with helping me step into this role. So uh, you mentioned other, you're aware of other councillors that have been thrust into the mayoralty in their first term. Um, have you been able to plug into a network of people that you can call on for support and advice? Absolutely. Algua, um, the Australian Local Government Women's Association, have a great mentoring program. Uh, so I was part of that mentoring program and it's, through that have met many uh, other women in particular who were first term mayors. And I'm very lucky here, there's some neighbouring shires that have got first term female mayors too in similar position with kids as well. Um, so wonderful support network. And, you know, you were talking about before about diversity and thinking about stepping mm -hmm. up as a female. Um, it, it is really challenging, especially around retention. So yes, being in the role as a first term councillor, but then how do we manage to keep women involved in these roles beyond that beyond their first term and then how do we diversify that even more because the focus has been about women and younger people on council but obviously there's a great more deal to diversity than than that lens so um is local government something you see yourself being invested in for quite some time post this term because the term itself uh hasn't got that much to run. no all of a sudden it's it's going very quickly uh the four years sounded quite a deal quite a long time at the start and my yeah. my eldest daughter was like mom how long are you going to be a counselor for now she's like mom you have to go again you have to run again this is great it's awesome um so you know the family are really supportive um and it you know what that looks like into the future I'm not sure at this point in time but whatever it looks like I'm very keen to keep involved in local government because it's been a big learning um curve for me around the role of what local government really does like with cost shifting and service shifting to local government from other levels of government the role of local government really has expanded over time and it's such a crucial role in our community so mm. definitely want to be part of local government into the future in whatever capacity that looks like based on what you've learned so far what do you say to others who might be listening particularly uh young women uh, mm. about uh, getting involved in local government and how to approach that it is a big decision uh, so I would say have conversations and have conversations early with your family and your support networks um, and whatever stage of life you're in, think about what you would like to contribute to the role. So, um, yes, it does take a significant amount of time, but it is very rewarding because of the work we get to do with the community and being grassroots and such um, such that local level of government where you're involved in the community, you really see where the impact of your decisions are in the community. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, have those conversations, have them early, really think about the role. It's a big decision to put your hand up, but highly encourage anybody that's interested in doing it to, to seriously think about it and always more than happy to have a chat with anybody that is thinking about doing that. What's your sense of where the next generation of councillors is coming from? Often you can tell uh, there's a cohort of people and sometimes, sadly, mayors say, well, you know, we struggle to see where the next group are going to come from? How's that looking in Macedon Rangers? Well, from the networking opportunities I've had and through the different conferences through BLGA, for example, um, Metro Melbourne really is diversifying and, you know, you network with Metro councils and there are a great range of different people that are coming through and really encouraging that next generation. I think we're slightly behind more in rural and regional Victoria with encouraging that, uh, that next generation. But in saying that, Massena Rangers has a really engaged community. We have a phenomenal amount of submissions whenever we go out to community consultation. And through that process, I'm starting to meet people who I think they would be, you know, a really good contender to put their hand up for local government. So through that process, trying to have those conversations with people on the way as well about thinking about, you know, what they might like to do into the future. What do you do, Annette, for your own health and well-being outside of uh, being a mayor and to keep perspective? Uh, walking. I love, we're very fortunate here in the Maston Rangers. We've got many great walking tracks. So I just get out in nature and just uh, go for those wonderful walks through our beautiful environment. It's, we're, we're very fortunate. And there's so many diverse walks um, out here that we can do. So for me, it's a great way to connect A, with where we live, um, but B, just to clear that mental health space that you need to, to continue in these roles. Uh, anything else you'd like to share with us before we wrap up? 
No, just this has been a wonderful opportunity to have a chat, Chris. And thanks very much um, for, you know, reaching out and asking me to be part of it. Really grateful. I've really enjoyed meeting you and chatting with you. And I wish you all the best for the rest of your mayoral term, but the rest of your local government career, which we hope is long and rewarding, Annette. Much appreciated. Thanks very much, Chris. Councillor Annette Deeth has been my guest today on Local Leaders. Annette is the Mayor of Macedon Rangers Shire Council. Thank you for watching and listening. Keep, uh, keep tuned for more coming to you soon from VLGA Connect. 